Hi there, you're watching Gardens and Graveyards and my name is Charisma. Today we're in our indoor garden and we're going to do some transplanting. A few weeks ago I shared with you my routine on um, just maintenance. And I didn't have about half of these. I was inspired as I did some rearranging in my studio and office and therefore my living room because I was borrowing furniture and, and paintings and stuff like that. Um, I made some more space for new plants. So I bought some new plants that need to be transplanted and then I have some babies that needed to be transplanted that I noticed during our, vi our video that we did. Just cleaning and fertilizing and that kind of thing. Um, but I noticed that okay, some of these babies need to get potted up. And being potted up is just an industry um, term that basically just means that a pot this size needs to go up into a pot this size. Or maybe smaller. You really only want to transplant your plants, your um, especially your your indoor tropical plants into a pot only one size bigger. Otherwise they'll kind of go into shock and you could cause a lot of problems. They just, if you think about how a plant, a tropical plant would be growing in the wild, they would be in an understory of big, huge plants, typically. So they can take a little bit more um, dampled light. They want a lot of humidity and they they would be competing for root areas right because they would be underneath they'd be in underneath uh, other big plants so they wouldn't have a whole lot of room for their roots systems and they also want something super well draining and that's because they're in humidity and because they just don't want to be sitting in a bunch of water and so that's what makes them perfect house plants because our homes are naturally a little bit humid and you could create more hu humidity or you know more dryness and you could get really particular the plants could get really particular none of my plants are that particular i don't have to mist any of my plants i don't want house plants that i have to mist it's just another step um you know i have over 50 plants i don't have time to be misting plants so you could create little environments, but generally speaking, a house um, environment is going to be somewhat low light. You're going to have brighter spaces next to, you know, south facing windows or just windows in general. And of course, you're going to have darker spaces where maybe no plants going to really thrive. I have ways where I'm not too, but mostly we're just talking about a normal house, normal lighting. I don't put any special lights on any of these plants except that I do plan on doing that for this Shuffalera, which I specifically purchased for a very dark corner in my living room. And so we're going to pot her up and then put some artificial light on her and let her just do her thing in that space. She's variegated, if you could see that. She's got very variegations on her leaves the yellow and I did that because when you're in a dark space those yellow spots will um, pop and show up. So that's why I picked the variegated form of this Shuffalera. Anyways, basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to start at the top. None of my plants have any diseases. Um, I had one that was struggling. I treated it with neem. It's doing pretty good. It looks kind of ratty but um, the new growth looks healthy and the leaves look like normal again so other than that everything looks really good and so while I normally like to practice um, disinfecting your pots between uses um, knowing all my plants really well none of I've, I've had all of these over three weeks so I know they're all good and most of them I've had some of them I've had over a year so I'm just going to use the step up that I just emptied. Does that make sense? So for example, I'm going to 
let's use this one. I'm going to transplant this plant into a bigger pot. That makes this pot empty. And then I can use that pot to transplant this size pot up into, into this. Up in, so I'll take this one and put it in this one after this one is empty. And I'm just going to work my way up the table that way. So I have my larger pots in the back here. I have medium pots in the middle and smaller pots in the end or the front. I will go over what these plants are really quick just to give you an idea and then I'm just going to get into it and as I go along if there's something really specific that I want to talk about I'll break in and, and talk about that. So in the back here I don't even know what this plant is. It's just gorgeous. It has, let me, I'm going to come up, I'm going to come up front and show you this a little bit better. This one has this beautiful dark purple underneath and then really pretty dark green on top. And it's got this upright growth. You can see the green and the purple, um, just super pretty. And I had to have it because of the purple. This plant is a ponytail palm. You can see the trunk of it has been buried a little too deep in the nursery pot. So we'll expose that a little bit. You should see the bulb a little bit better. You could sort of see it, but I could see that they've piled soil up around this bulb. So I'm going to expose the bulb a little bit more. It comes off, it's called a ponytail palm because it comes off in these like little ponytails. Really fun. It's definitely ready to be transplanted anyways. You can see the roots coming out of the bottom. That tells you for sure this plant is ready to be transplanted. I showed you the Shuffalera. I also have a Manta or praying, let's see, prayer plant. Just the general one with the dark green variegation on it. This was a cutting from my grandmother's plant. So um, I've had it in this pot maybe two years. And so we'll do a little bit cleaning up too. Take off any little dead pieces and that kind of thing. We have this Dracaena. I really liked it because it has three little points. This is really typical of a Dracaena, little trunk, little, and then the growth. But this one has a, a dark burgundy margin on it. No, you could see it. It is called a Dracaena marginata because of the margin. Okay, this is a bird's nest fern. This guy gets pretty good sized and I've just had it for a couple of months. I'm looking forward to letting it get big. Um, I've got another cutting of the Manta. <laughs> they root so easy and it's so like, I'll move this. Those plants root so easy. You can see this root coming off of it. And this is a cutting that we did from when we did our plant maintenance. So this is an asparagus fern. It is kind of wild. It's been in this tiny pot. This is the decorative pot. It's been in, in this little pot. It's just barely smaller um, for two years. So I think she'll be really happy to get out of there. I have this little sense of area. It's in a very tiny pot and ready. Look at that. It just came right out of its pot. It's so ready. Um, to just go up, I mean, it's barely going to go up like a tiny bit. Um, these guys really like their roots bound. Then we have another Dracaena. And it's also been in this pot for maybe like a year. So ready. I've let them dry out a little bit. 
um, to do this transplanting project. It's just easier to work with when the soil's not wet. Here's an, another type of Sansevieria. It's got the margins, really pretty. It's got, it also has the variegation. I love that combo. But it's also fun to see like the complete difference in these types of plants. They're both Sansevieria. This one, I don't know if you could tell on the screen, but it's like rolled like a pencil. So it's like, it's round instead of a flat leaf. Um, I don't, this is a Peperomia. And, oh my gosh, you guys, this has been in here for two years. It is so time. It's desperately wanting out of this pot. Uh, this looks like I got a little crispy. I don't know if that's going to bounce back for me or not. Well, so I, set up, I set this project up like three days ago and I meant to film and I didn't. And then today is Wednesday. It's watering day. So it's definitely time to do it. And this is like, ooh, it's not happy. Well, we'll see what happens. Um, then I have this beauty who's doing fabulous. And I'm actually not sure if I'm going to transplant this one or not. I'll have to pull it out and see what the roots look like. But this is also, this was a cutting off of my grandma's plant. So I'm really happy to have her. And let's see, here is another Manta. Uh, just another cutting again. Um, the Mantas and the Cactus the, the mantas and the Christmas cactus, two different grandmas. Pass along your plants. Your grandchildren will be happy. Okay, so I think that's it. Oh, I was going to say, this Sansevieria I just got um, last month, and it's still got a little bit of loose soil and... I think I'm just gonna leave it alone. This one I'm not going to replant. I just wanted to show you like the difference between some plants versus other plants and the Sansevieria is really happy being root bound and there's nothing coming out the bottom. So I'll probably leave this in here hopefully only like six months, but if I'm not paying attention, it'll probably be a year. Um, I try to go through this once a year and do all my transplants either in the fall or the spring. Spring is great because I can start fertilizing them right away and then they're happy. In the fall, I don't fertilize. I just get them settled into new soil, which always has a little bit of like nutri new nutrients anyways. And then, um, but I don't fertilize my plants through the winter because that's not the natural cycle. Um, the house is a little bit cooler. The the sun is like not as intense and in most of the areas of my, pla my plants aren't getting hardly any sun at all during the winter. So um, I don't transplant or I don't fertilize in the fall and winter, but um, I'll start fertilizing today. So I'm just going to get into it. After I'm done transplanting, we'll get into more of the decorative stuff and I'll share that with you. I have a stack of clean nursery pots in case I need them. I'm just using this black gold all-purpose potting soil along with perlite. And while I'm not a huge fan of miracle Grow, uh, it was the only perlite that the hardware store had while it was there. And so I'm just going to deal with it, I guess. But... Um, I do about 60% potting, 60, 80% potting soil and 20% perlite just gives it a lot of really good drainage. Um, there's tons of mixtures. You find what works best for you. For me, in my indoor plants, that's the best thing for me. I don't want anything that's going to hold moisture because where I live right off the coast in central Oregon, I have a lot of moisture already. I deal with, um, you know, fungus and mold in my house 
anyways, so I definitely don't want to introduce anything into my soils that hold that moisture. I want them really draining really fast and easy. So yeah, that might mean I have to give them a little bit more water in the summertime, but I hands down would rather do that than deal with fungus gnats or mold or anything nasty like that. So, all right, let's do this. Ideally, I would be making a giant batch of this in like a huge tote, but for whatever reason, I started this project without a giant tote in here, and so just gonna do it this way. It's fine. Just be individually mixed. And actually, that's gonna give me a little bit more control because if I know that there's some plants that really need a lot of drainage, or other plants that I know want a little bit more moisture, I can kind of customize this mix a little bit better than just doing a general mix. Okay. So I just wanted to show you, like this is what the mix looks like straight out of the bag. It has a little bit of perlite in there. Um, you can kind of see there's perlite in there. But then after adding after adding the perlite, this is what my mix looks like. You could see a lot more perlite in there. And that's just how I prefer to plant my plants. So, let's take All right. Now, I want to put down my pack down my soil a little bit, but I don't want to like shove it like hard compact but I know that my roots are going to need to settle so I want to make sure that it's loose enough for my roots to get through but not so loose that when I water I'm going to lose a bunch of soil or wash off a bunch of soil so basically looks like that for now create a little space I'm gonna put this guy in there. Actually going to take off some of this soil. And this plant I bought from a big box store. So, I'm just a little bit more careful with what I might have brought home from that. They're just, they don't seem to be as mindful about 
their growing medium. So I'm just kind of taking some of that off of this plant. But I'm leaving plenty of soil on there um, to not disturb the root balls too much. I have a little bit of it circling. So, okay. I want the crown of my plant to be at the same level in the soil in this pot as it was in its old pot. So, just settle that in there, and then I'm just gonna that. Crown is still exposed a little bit, so let's keep going. Okay, and there we have it. I'm going to wait till the end to water these in, so just going to keep going. This pot, or this plant also came from a big box store. So... You can see how rooted in it is. It's really difficult to get off. Sometimes just squeezing the bottom, massaging it out of there. Look at how root bound that is. So like I mentioned, I wanted to expose some of this trunk a little bit more because it the either the store or the nursery just planted it up a little too high and there's a little bit of damage here so we'll see uh, how that works but you can see that there's nothing growing down here there's no roots coming off of this which tells me that this is still part of the trunk so I'm gonna try to gently get these all these wild roots um, down in here. Might need a little bit bigger. I might need a little bit bigger of a pot than this, actually. So, let's see. Okay, let's use this one. Let's see if I have enough soil. Now, I know that the ponytail fern, or ponytail palm, um, likes, it really likes to dry out in between watering, and it can easily rot. So I put a little bit extra perlite in this batch, so that she can just definitely be well draining. I've had, I had success with a ponytail Palm. I had her maybe four years and then she accidentally got overwatered and um, died very quickly, very quickly after that. I tried to let her totally dry out and she just lost all of her leaves and just threw a huge fit. So, try again, hopefully. This one will be happier. All right, 
So I'm gonna make it super deep. This thing go in here. One of the difficult parts is making sure that you don't plant the leaves. <laughs> More of her trunk is exposed. She's in a bit bigger pot. I think she'll be happy, yeah. Take those off. Okay. Okay. Let's use this one. This plant came from a nursery that I trust. And I'm just going to leave it just like this and not really disturb her roots too much. I actually have too much soil in here. Kind of top dressed it with something like maybe coconut core or something. I'm sure. Okay. There we go. Now I can just put some soil in around it. To keep these guys um, nice and stocky or, or shrubby, I guess, we could take off some of these leaves that are coming off and just try to keep it a little stronger in there. Um, I'm not going to take them all off, But that'll help encourage some of the root growth and just help it just grow um, like stronger branches. I'll disassemble this guy. So, can see the crazy, can you see how bad those roots are? Yikes! I'm going to take the decorative moss off of here. Ugh. Oh, look, I just broke it. It's okay. It's okay. I'm just going to put it in some water and let it grow. I'll just put it in some water with this one. I'm going to use one of these containers that I just emptied, fill it up, take this poor thing, I can just take the roots right off of it, just rip them off. They're just going to break off pulling it up through the pot anyway. So again, I can just sort of massage container. Yikes. Don't leave your pot, your plants in pots too long. Just gonna rough it up. I'm just roughing it up a little bit. Just to They're actually fairly loose, so I'm not overly worried about it, but I don't really want to break them. I just want them to breathe a little bit.
So you see, they didn't go up that much different. And these guys like to be in kind of a shallow, short, squatty pot. So that's what I'm providing for it. And you can see that the circumference is definitely larger. All right, so I'm gonna do this one next. These. It's a good idea to remove the labels so you don't get confused. If you can. Okay. Now this guy grows pretty quickly and fairly large. So I'm going to go ahead and give him a good size bump up. Look in here. No major root ball, so I'm not even going to rough up the edges. Just pop him right back into some new soil, bigger pot. Keep the label with the plant. Let's do, so this one can go in here. I could have divided this. You see there's two plants here. I could technically divide them, but I don't really need to do that. So I'm not going to this time. I suspect we'll be planting this one up again in the fall if I could get the root system to grow really good because the leaves are doing fantastic. The roots were a little weak and I'm guessing that's because it was in such a small pot. And this itty bitty tiny sense of area. Just pop it right in there. Again, two years. Please forgive me. That looks more to scale. Uh, uh, and this thing. And again, this is that one that was really struggling. It had 
some spider mite and it got quarantined and treated and the the new growth is clean but really pale that might be because the quarantine was in mostly shade like deep shade take this out and i'm not going to use this pot again and i'm going to try to get as much soil off the root ball as i can and give it all fresh soil okay so you could see how bad these guys were struggling so all the soil's off of there we're gonna put it in this pot fresh soil just gonna make a little well with my finger stick her way down in there I'm even going to bury her cane just a tiny bit. Uh, just to see if that helps her grow some new fresh roots. All right. Be blessed, sweet plant. I have another one of those. All right, we've got um, a very large drip tray for her, but we're gonna give her a big drink. Let the soil settle. Another big drink. Leave her alone for a little bit. Okay, then we just have these little babies. To take care of and we're just gonna use this little guy here get this back up on the table right so I just popped two that I broke in here, so we're not going to use those ones, but we are going to use the one with plenty of roots and take off this dead leaf. I think there might be two in here with roots, but this one has just, it's just one leaf, but it has some roots. So we're going to do that, and then those are the new ones. Let's put some water in there. So... Put this in here. Put this one center. Goes like that. There we go. So again with the label that doesn't belong. You can also just take a Sharpie and cross out anything. But if I do that and it's just you can't see what, what it is anymore, I know that it's not that plant anymore. I need drip trays for these and so we'll continue this project in just a few minutes. I'm actually going to stop this video here. It's about 40 minutes long and I want to be mindful of your time. But make sure you stay tuned and watch part two so you could see how I stage these plants and you can too.